This is Perspectivas Latinas, a community service of CAN-TV. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Musical traditions are an essential part of any culture, and for our guests, Carlos Flores and Jeff Cuss, that tradition is tied to the tiple, an instrument native to Puerto Rico. They're here to share some of the music and to talk about the yearly workshop for making this instrument here in our city. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Uh, Carlos, uh, um, let's start off the show by you know you telling us about yourself and uh, very briefly what inspired you and uh, what you want. Well, well, I think that the, how this whole thing came about is mm -hmm. that back in the uh, mid 1990s, mm -hmm. when I was at Columbia College uh, coordinating a project for the Center for Black Music Research, I ran across a group of individuals who were really engulfed in this whole Puerto Rican traditional culture through mm -hmm. the Cuatro, and it was called the Cuatro Project. A gentleman by the name of William Cumpiano, mm -hmm. Juan Sotomayor, and other individuals. And they approached me about putting together a Cuatro Festival. Mm -hmm. We did that uh, in 1998. We put together the first Cuatro Festival, and we coordinated the first three years. And then we came up with the idea of uh, actually uh, William Cumpiano, who's a, a guitar maker, mm -hmm. uh, came up with the idea of trying to put together a, a, a project to build Deep List. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it began in 2006. We began uh, coordinating this project where we would actually teach people how to make the steep land. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it's part of a rescue mm -hmm. mission because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the you could trace the instrument all the way to the 16th century, but it's one of those instruments that has kind of been forgotten. Okay. And so the mission has been to actually rescue the instrument. Okay. And how did you get wrapped up in this rescue uh, of the well, I came in, in Chicago? I came in through the other door. One day I walked into my favorite music shop and found mm -hmm. a quattro. Okay. Didn't know what it was mm -hmm. and uh, bought it for 50 bucks and brought it home and fell in love with it. And then uh, while looking to find a way to repair it, I met William Cumpiano mm -hmm. first on the phone and then later purchased one of his instruments and he had me out to... Massachusetts where I played a concert and he said by the way I come to Chicago every June and and we build this instrument called a tea play so then I took the workshop and built this instrument mm -hmm. and um, that's how I got involved and now I play in the Chicago Quattro Orchestra and uh, uh, we're, yeah, we're going back to Puerto Rico to play in a couple of weeks that's that's awesome well let's, uh, let's hear a piece that you uh, we recorded here in the studio uh, okay just to get us started all right Thanks for, for sharing that piece with us My and pleasure. Uh, with our audience. Uh, uh, quite a beautiful piece. And uh, you have uh, a tiple in your hands. This is the one I built mm -hmm. at the Chicago workshop in 2013. Mm -hmm. It started out as a pile of wood like that, mm -hmm. uh, poplar, spruce top, uh, mahogany, uh, some tuners, and fret wire. 
-hmm. And um, uh, so you start with that and you do all the cutting and all the shaping and, and mm -hmm. carving the neck and when you're done, you have uh, this instrument. And the, the instrument originally would have been built by guys who you know, wouldn't have had anything more than a tree and a machete. Wow. And they would have figured out how to do this, and mm -hmm. the original fret wires probably would have been strings that they tied in the right place, the way they did with old lutes. And the original use of this instrument was uh, playing at the funerals of children. Wow. And, then, and that was built by the Hibaros. By the Hibaros. Uh, tell us, uh, Carlos, what is a uh, Hibaro? Well, Hibaros are, are, you know, more the people that live in the rural, you know, more the peasants that mm -hmm. live in the... Uh, rural areas of, of Puerto Rico and mm -hmm. so uh, they uh, you know again when this instrument came about probably mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them probably could not even afford to buy a quadro or even uh, an instrument so they kind of built built their own and mm -hmm. this, is how, this is how they got around they were very handy with their hands right in terms of carving and, and cutting with machetes and so forth so they didn't have the tools that we that are available to us today so Tell me, um, I'm sure some of our guests will be curious in wanting to create an instrument of their own. How good do I have to be with, um, with you know, tools and with my hands? Not. Uh, no, no experience Absolute whatsoever. Beginner. No experience whatsoever. No experience whatsoever. As a matter of fact, we had a woman one time who came in and mm -hmm. she, she actually decided to build a deep lane. And the one thing is that we use power tools. We use electric saw and electric drills. And she says, uh, wow. I see all these instruments, you know, all these uh, tools in my, mm -hmm. in my garage that my husband uses. Mm -hmm. From now on, I'm going to start using them myself since I've learned how to use them in this shop. <laughs> so, so it's kind of interesting. Well, that, that is. Uh, and this, this workshop is open to whom? It's open to, uh, well, basically we wanted to actually mm -hmm. have it for people in the community. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've opened it up to a lot of different people. And mm -hmm. it's not just Puerto Ricans that make it. We've had uh, Serbians making it. We've had Mexicans, African Americans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. Yeah. <laughs> really right. So it, it's it's not you know we actually <laughs> allowed anyone who would respect mm -hmm. the culture because the mission is to actually since it's a rescue mission we would teach you about mm -hmm. the culture, the music, and how to make it. But we expect you to carry the word forward. Okay. And let other generations know about it. Right. You just said a key word for uh, for me. And I think for all of us, um, rescue. Why? Is this part of a rescue mission? For well, the uh, Puerto Rico has a history of, uh, you know, the whole thing with the instrument being brought in by the Europeans in terms of when they came mm -hmm. to uh, to colonize the, uh, and not even if it's such a good word to use, colonize, but to colonize and mm -hmm. to actually uh, establish their settlements in the New World in the mm -hmm. Americas. They brought their instruments with them, and in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. uh, some of those instruments were brought, but uh, Puerto Ricans actually decided to develop and create mm -hmm. uh, this whole history of string instruments. So we have four instruments that have actually developed out of, uh, out of the island, and that's uh, the cuatro, the vihuela, mm -hmm. uh, and the tiple, and there's another one that I can't... The bordon. The bordon. Mm -hmm. That uh, bordonua, that I would not... Uh, and those four instruments have developed in the island of Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. and I think there's one other element to mm -hmm. this thing, and that is if you live in an isolated island, and certainly in the days of seafaring, uh, Puerto mm -hmm. Rico would have qualified. You develop your own culture. You, de you write your own songs, you sing your own songs. Mm -hmm. And then as, as your culture becomes more worldly, it gets invaded, augmented, however you want to look at it, mm -hmm. by other musics, other styles. Mm -hmm. and, and people look for something new and they say, wow, this, this salsa is really cool. Wow, this rock and roll is really cool. And mm -hmm. so the old instruments tend to to fall to the wayside and, and someone has to say hold on we don't want to lose what we have here mm -hmm. yeah because uh, even even so even though these are m made now and the deep play was something that developed in puerto rico it's still uh, what i've thought of the sounds and what i thought of the the shape of it is it looks like a medieval instrument to me not that i'm an expert on medieval music but when i've seen images and i've heard some music Absol absolutely mm -hmm. i mean when you consider the tools that would be at someone's disposal. When you see extremely fancy designs and inlays and lots and lots of precision, that indicates a level of, of machinery and, and craftsmanship. The, really what you've got in your hand here is some guy decided to figure out how to build one of these from his own resources mm -hmm. so that he would have the privilege mm -hmm. of creating his own culture. 
And that, that's the really powerful lesson of this is you, you build one of these instruments and you realize, you yeah. know, you, go in, you don't, have to, be, uh, you don't mm -hmm. have to know anything about instruments to do this. You can mm -hmm. be a beginner. The guys, who, the guys who invented these instruments were beginners and they figured out how to do it. Right. And right. not only that, but you also have uh, uh, developed through this music, you know, other, you know, musical styles too. Mm -hmm. You know, the Aguinaldo and the uh, other different music styles that c come out of Puerto Rico mm -hmm. as a result of, you know, accompanying the music of the Cuatro and the Tiple. So mm -hmm. The decimas is that also? The decimas is one of them, which mm -hmm. is a real interesting mm -hmm. way the decimas are written because it's a formula. It's like poetry. You have to actually be able to sing it, mm -hmm. and the phrases have to fall within certain... Uh, I'm not a musician, but they have to fall within certain meters, and so... Yeah. So therefore, you know, it's a very, very complex situation that comes out of these uh, instruments that have been around for over 400 years. Mm -hmm. Right. So take me through these, these pieces, please, um, both of you. Um, tell me what sure. becomes what, <laughs> because... Mm -hmm. This is your neck. Mm -hmm. It's been, here's one of the favors Mr. Kumpiano does mm -hmm. for you. It's pre-cut. Those score lines are where the frets will go. So, so that's given to you like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you are going to mm -hmm. make the cuts that will eventually give you the headstock. Mm -hmm. And then eventually this is going to be held onto the body with this wood screw. Okay. But you have to carve the neck. Mm -hmm. This I did by hand with mm -hmm. a knife. With a knife? With a knife. What kind of knife? Big sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they come in left-handed and right-handed. Okay. Uh, they're, they're carving knives. Okay. Uh, they're the same kind of knives you would use to carve Santos or do any kind of precision carving woodwork. Not just a uh, kitchen knife. Not a kitchen knife. Okay. No. Uh, but they're 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 scary sharp. Scary. Uh, so that's that's your fretboard. Mm -hmm. This is the bridge. Okay. Which eventually you will drill the holes in at the proper angle so that okay. you have the right downward pressure, mm -hmm. and you'll use a disc sander to create the little oh, scoops. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. This is a piece of top board. This is a piece of cedar. Mm -hmm. This instrument has a cedar top. This one has a spruce top. Mm -hmm. It's one of the choices that will you will eventually cut that, put the sound hole in it, mm -hmm. put the uh, rosetta, the, the decoration around the sound hole. Mm -hmm. Here are your tuning pegs. These are the uh, total uh, El Primitivos here. These exactly. don't have <laughs> gears. These do have gears, strings. Mm -hmm. This little dealie right here is the little decoration that levels the back to oh where wow. your neck goes. Okay. That's uh, a non-structural but uh, mm -hmm. visually uh, delightful part. Here's right. your back. And you'll cut the body of the instrument out of this. And if you're clever like I was, all right, so maybe that was, that was egomaniacal. <laughs> if you're clever like I did, you, you keep the middle of it and you cut it in half and you make cutting boards that are T-play shaped. <laughs> uh, but that becomes the, this is the body of the instrument. Mm -hmm. So uh, every participant gets a kit like this. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at one time it used to be we were not charged, but given that mm -hmm. things are getting a little tough, you know, we actually, what we charge is we, we charge people to mm -hmm. purchase a wood kit. Okay. So the instructions, the tools, and everything else is, is free. Well, I mean, and it's really, you know, uh, if people want more information on the prices and all that, what it would cost and the commitment, um, uh, they can just go to your Facebook page, right? Or they can give you We a have call. a Facebook page called uh, Puerto Rican Deep Lake Construction Workshop, which is on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you could also contact me uh, directly uh, and also email me. Okay. Well, the, um, well they'll certainly we'll have the information from your Facebook page up there and your, your telephone number as well. Um, uh, what I want to do now is I want to uh, go through some some images that uh, from the past few years. This workshop has been going on since when? 2006. Wow. And the only time that we took that I took a break was in 2009 because we we started at uh, we started one of the game rooms in the church, mm -hmm. and then from there uh, we went to the. We actually move our operations to the Puerto Rican parade facilities, mm -hmm. and that turned out to be kind of like really crazy because all the noise and everything, right. but it was pretty good. And then the following year, we mm -hmm. moved it across the street uh, to the park. Okay, so let's take a look at some images now, and you'll take us through them. Uh, I can't really tell all the years, so. Right. But That's this fine, is just a, take us what's happening. This is a young happening. lady who's a student, uh, mm -hmm. a student at the, uh, one of the students that came in, and she's like working on her own. She's kind of like sanding away after 
kind kind of giving shape to the body of the. She's the trimming the the extra edge off the top board. That's the spindle sander that she's using and making it flush. Okay. This is a, uh, an African American woman who okay. actually has her granddaughter next to her. Okay. It was her and her granddaughter who actually joined the class to take the class, and she probably didn't have no experience ever working with any tools. But there she goes, and yeah. she built one of these. And uh, she already cut out the the there, exactly. right? Exactly. Wow. Because we didn't do it for her. She had to do it herself. People so. have to do it all on, on their own. I mean, well, exactly. with support, obviously. They, have, they yeah. make their own instruments. With guidance. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's, that's her with her granddaughter working mm -hmm. on it. It looks pretty late at night. <laughs> yeah, you know, because we go until 8.30, 9 o'clock. It's mm -hmm. probably the flash. And it starts getting dark. Well, we have lights. Yeah, okay. We have lights. So <laughs> you we want people cutting in. their hands off. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. definitely. <laughs> we have lights that actually mm -hmm. kind of focus on the where the tools are. Okay. So. Awesome. This is uh, kind of like a lunch break. Uh, as you can see, we actually, for the last four or five years, we've yeah. actually moved our operation to the, to the parking lot of the church in the rear of the church. What church again? San Lucas Church, uh, which is at 2924 West North Avenue. Okay. And we actually actually rent tents. Okay. In case it rains or anything. In like case that. it rains. And mm -hmm. we actually have all the tools that we actually put away in the shed. Mm -hmm. This is William Compiano actually teaching mm -hmm. the, the students on how to send the... Uh, part of the piece that they cut. This is from probably 2010. And uh, you, it seems like you get a lot of women. It's not this male-dominated No, thing. it's, it's, mm. it's, it's well, pretty even the year I was yeah, doing it. It's pretty it. even, right. But we That's actually cool. try to get women also mm -hmm. to participate. Right. And what, what? This is in the park. This is in Humble Park. Oh, we this is actually, Humble Park. Right, we set up the whole operation with the lamps. That, uh, we get these tables from uh, uh, a wood program, uh, mm -hmm. I think the West Town a project and they let us use their tables and we bring the tables out and that's how we uh, get it done. But this is done actually in the during the Puerto Rican Parade festivities where people went by and they oh, saw okay. us okay. doing the work. Okay. This is in the, the first one that we did, the first year in 2006. First, <laughs> wow. In the game room of the church. <laughs> wow, it looks, yeah, that looks, even though it's not that long ago, it seems like it's so long ago. I mean, it, the, the newer pictures look like it's organized differently and well you know it's, it's a work in progress yeah that's what yeah. it is you know it's, we learn and we go along this lady is actually <laughs> delighted that she's one of the people that finish we go through this whole celebration when people finish mm -hmm. and we applaud and uh and it's awesome. kind of like you, you bond you start out on monday you know not mm -hmm. knowing who you're dealing with and by saturday you've actually created new friends and new families mm -hmm. do you name the instrument oh and this is you can this is what the kit the yes. kit you get right this right. is just laid the out kit that we just talked about yeah, a few minutes that's, ago that's just showing it there and uh the last picture will be what becomes of the, or part of the steps in uh, making the deeper yeah right this right. is those are the necks that are adjoining the sides of a body okay so as you can see, the little the little uh, square bit that's sticking down from the neck is going to be screwed in. Okay. Yeah. To the hole at the top of the body there. Wow, wow, this is um, really, I mean, fascinating work. And uh, how is the well? It seems like the community has been responding for quite a number of years. Uh, and you make friends, and you learn about these uh, tools. Uh, what do you see as the impact be beyond uh, the rescue of this instrument? Well, you know, we're hoping that we get people to build it. We hope to get people to bring back the instrument. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. we are already, uh, uh, Cumpiano, Mr. William Cumpiano, and myself, we, you know, actually he drafted and we drafted a proposal to do a Tiple Festival that we're trying to shop around, similar to what the Cuatro Festival is around. Mm -hmm. And we've, you know, gotten some people that are looking at it uh, mm -hmm. in terms of doing a festival just featuring the Tiple. Because mm -hmm. we had people out there who are actually performing. We just actually had a group that came in from Puerto Rico with a whole string instrument of Puerto Rico with the cuatro and all the instrument, and they included the tiple. They did? Yeah, they included the tiple as part of the whole uh, presentation of the... So that's basically our goal, to bring it back and have young people play it, mm -hmm. have people enjoy the music. Uh, recordings have been made, and uh, so basically that is it, so people will not forget. Wow. Some and quite a ways from where the instrument was born in, in, in Puerto Rico. Uh, you were telling me uh, before the show started that somebody from Puerto Rico contacted you, right? Right, we just, we actually, through my Facebook page, we've, mm -hmm. uh, we've been actually been putting the word out, we've been doing promo, because mm -hmm. we're trying to get people interested at, at, at an early start. 
And so I guess this woman read something about it on Facebook, and she contacted me, wanted to know whether or not uh, this thing, this class was being taught in Puerto Rico. So what I did is I referred to the Department of William Cumpiano, mm -hmm. and I said, maybe you should respond to this. And he responded to telling her, you know, the only place that this is being done is in Chicago and the whole world. And mm -hmm. last year they started doing it in Hartford, Connecticut, mm -hmm. where Mr. Cumpiano was also the instructor. Wow. It, Mr. Cumpiano, it seems like he's had a profound influence on this. Is he from Chicago? No, he's not. He's at... Uh, well, uh, he grew up in Boston, but he's mm -hmm. he's in uh, uh, Northampton, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. is, is where his home is. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he's the guy who started the Quattro Project, which is on... Uh, you know, it's a, uh, you can see it online. It's right. uh, mm -hmm. preserving the history, and he's got tons of uh, recordings of of all the old masters, and mm -hmm. he's been very instrumental, uh, no pun intended, in in preserving <laughs> uh, the, the culture and and right. the knowledge. No pun intended, but it's yeah. so and it's kind of interesting because you know uh, here we have people trying to preserve mm -hmm. and and uh, disseminate information about a culture, and they're not people from the island. They're people here that are born mm -hmm. and raised in the United States who actually have loved and adopted this, you know, because one of the things that a lot of Puerto Ricans mm -hmm. left since they started leaving the island, even at the turn of the century right. when they went all the way to Hawaii, is that they took their music with them. Mm -hmm. And their music was just the recordings or their instruments. Right, right, and right. the instrument was the, the cuatro. Mm -hmm. And so the music has always been at the heart of, 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 of the Puerto Rican history and the Puerto Rican identity. Definitely. And... Um, well, we could get into these very, <laughs> uh, this very deep conversation, but I want you to tell me briefly, what is it that has motivated you to, uh, what in your experience here in Chicago has motivated you to want to preserve, want to rescue, want to continue with this tradition? You know what, I, I, I nail it down to love. I actually was raised in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. by my grandparents, and I actually felt that, you know, we're a you know, great group of people. You know, I, I mm -hmm. love the culture, love our people. And I have bowed to myself, you know, I came here when I was 10 years old mm -hmm. to never forget it. And, and for some reason, it just continues to happen. And I have actually dedicated my, my whole life, just like William Cumpiano and the other folks, to promote the, the history and the culture of Puerto Ricans, not only in the United States, but the history and the culture of Puerto Rico. And we actually okay. have a history in the United States, too. Oh, definitely. So let's watch that second piece that uh, Jeff was so kind to share with us here.
Well, once again, thanks for that piece. It's uh, my pleasure. Very beautiful music. Uh, uh, Carlos, tell us about when this is taking place, and uh, very briefly, we don't have much time. We, we usually do this right the day after Father's Day, okay. which is actually after the Puerto Rican Parade, Puerto Rican festivities. Mm -hmm. So we start like this. This year will be from June 22nd to June 28th, and we do June 28th like on Sunday mm -hmm. for the stragglers, you know, the people who don't <laughs> finish on time. Right. So we we were there Sunday afternoon to make sure that they finish. Okay, uh, Jeff, tell us what your experience has been like for uh, in, in this workshop? Uh, I, I've done two of them now because I made the second mm -hmm. instrument and I'll be the assistant, the luthier's assistant this year. Uh, aside from the education and, and how an instrument is built and what, what a precious gift an instrument is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I had a great time. I learned a great deal and, and, you know, it's, to me, playing an instrument like this, an instrument that I built myself, there's some part of me in it. Mm -hmm. And when I play it, I'm just immediately in touch with that, and and it's it's so fragile and it's it's just wonderful. I I really enjoy playing it, and and I every time I pick it up, I'm reminded of what it, what a deep experience building it was. Wow, wow, that's that's awesome and good words to part with. Thank you both for coming out to share uh, about this workshop and what you're doing for Puerto Rican music. Thank you. And to you, thank you for joining us. Perspectivas Latinas is a community service of CAN-TV. If your nonprofit organization would like to work with CAN-TV, call 312-738-1400 and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Perspectivas Latinas for local issues and concerns every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. on CAN-TV 21. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.